In this video, I am going to explain various things about the cubic function. These might be very helpful when you study and solve some calculus problems. I used these concepts a lot when I solved the Korean CSAT problems in the past. Before we start this lecture, suppose you know the following three mathematical concepts. First, the polynomial functions and its derivatives. Second, extrema such as local maximum and local minimum. And lastly, inflection point. The general form of the cubic function is the following. At this time, a, b, c, and d are the real numbers. There are six graphs below. All graphs are the examples of the cubic functions. The upper three are the cases that a, which is the coefficient of the greatest degree, is positive. The lower three are the cases that a is negative. The cubic function has either both local maximum and minimum, like the left two graphs, or none, like the rest of them. The sentence in the middle is the definition of the point of inflection. If the second derivative of a function f is equal to zero at a point on f, then the point is the inflection point of f. The cubic function has only but always one inflection point, and is always point symmetry at its inflection point because its derivative is the polynomial function which is line symmetry at a vertical line passing its extrema. For your reference, that extrema shares as the same x point as the inflection point of f. If a cubic function f has two extremas, then they must be local maximum and local minimum points, isn't it? Like the picture on the right side. Then the inflection point must be located exactly at the middle of the two extremas. So if you know the two extremas, then you can find the inflection point very easily, like the equation below. If the inflection point lies on the x-axis, then the equation of f can be expressed as in the picture. In cubic function f having extremas, there exist points that have the same f values as extremas. Let me define them as k1, fk1 and k2, fk2, such that fk1 is equal to fkq and fk2 is equal to fp. Then we can change fx by using k1 and q or using k2 and p like the equations on the left side. For example, let's look at the second one. If fk1 and fq were zero, then k1 and q must have been x-intercepts. Then the function fx just crosses the x-axis at x equals k1, and it also meets x-axis at x equals q, but do not cross. That's why the degree of x minus k1 is one and x minus q is two then I believe that you can understand the below equation as well. This is the last topic in this video. Let me explain the picture first. Suppose that fx is a cubic function which the coefficient of the greatest degree of the polynomial is positive. p, fp is the local maximum. q, fq is the local minimum. k1, fk1 is the point which has the same f value with the local minimum. In other words, fk1 is equal to fq, and k2, fk2 is the point which has the same f value with the local maximum. Lastly, xi, fxi is the inflection point of f. At that time, we know that k1 less than p less than xi less than q less than k2. Just x value, not f value. But they are so far away in the same distance each other. In other words, all the lengths marked in the red star are equal. Again, the distances from k1 to p, p to xi, xi to q, and q to k2 are equal. Let's prove this. I am going to use one of the equation forms previously explained. That is a times x minus k1 times square of x minus q plus fq. If you take derivative f by x, you get a times square of x minus q plus 2a times x minus k1 times x minus q. And if you simplify this, you get a times x minus q times 3x minus 2k1 plus q. From this equation, we know that f prime equals 0 when x equals q or x equals 2k1 plus q over 3 but f prime equals zero when x equals p since p comma fp is extrema. 
so p equals 2k1 plus q over 3. Now, let's change the denominator of p to 2 plus 1. Can you see that this is a form of the internal division formula? To shortly explain about the internally dividing point, a point p which internally divides line AB into M to N is NA plus MB divided by N plus M. Now let's go back to the last slide. So we know that P divides the line K1Q into 1 to 2 ratio. So the ratio of the line K1P to line PQ is 1 to 2. That means the line K1P is equal to the half of the line PQ. Additionally, since XI is the X value of the inflection point, both the line PXI and line XIQ are equal to the half of the line PQ. So, we get the result as below. Likewise, either by derivating the other form, or by understanding that F is point symmetry by its inflection point, we can find that the line PXI, line XIQ, and the line QK2 are equal. So, all four lengths are equal. How was this video? Please hit like if you liked my video today, and subscribe if you want to study math with my videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.